point of Forby at the wild tracks of Tasmania, you know your rig is going to be pushed to its absolute limit. <laughs> that makes this the perfect place to break in my brand new build, Sooty Mark II. Take it all in because something tells me that Sooty's never going to look the same again. Oh my god. This is our second attempt at this track and so far we are not one, but two vehicles down. That was nothing short of epic. I'm not going to lie, this switch back scares the absolute heck out of me. How sketchy he has. That's it right there, clean snap on the inner axle. But this time, I may have just bitten off a bit more than I can chew. Well, I'm actually nervous about this one, that really nervous. What's that sound? That sounds rattly, yeah. Hasn't exactly turned out the way I'd hoped for. Gusts me to say it, mate, it really does. I'm going to put Sooty on the back of the truck. Well, I'm very excited about this whole trip because I'm driving Sooty Mark II. The first time it's literally been at the shed. It's driven on its own steam about 2,000 k's. We're down in Tasmania. The boys should be just up in front, in fact, and we'll be airing down, hit the tracks in no time. Can't wait for this one. There's always a mix of excitement and anxiety when you finally get a project out of the shed and onto the tracks. And after months of work, Sooty has never looked so good. But this is the wild west coast of Tasmania, one of the harshest wheeling destinations in Australia. And it's a heck of a way to road test a new build. <laughs> Have a go with that. That is wicked. <laughs> break down, no, I didn't break down, no. Nah. <laughs> he has got confidence in it, apparently. How good? How good? We've got an epic trip lined up ahead and a great bunch of mates along for the ride. With Pete from Ultimate 9, Tony from GME, and Ruben from DMW Industries in the convoy. Jesse is also joining us on this trip, and with all his rusty old Nissan stuck on the hoist, he's taking the D-Max out for a spin. We're starting our trip with an absolute belter of a West Coast number, the infamous Ring River track. This one runs deep into the forests of South Rosebury. It's tight and technical, and right now, it's looking pretty wet too. Well, if you're thinking it's pretty wet down here in Tassie, <laughs> they've just had 200 mils of rain, so we really don't know what to expect, other than a fair bit of mud, a fair bit of water. Oh, look at this one. Oh. It doesn't take long for things to heat up on the Ring River track. And up ahead is one mean looking bog hole. Well, Sean is down in Tassie in his brand new build and you sort of want to ease him into things. So I've just got this little mud hole for him and uh, somehow I don't think he's going to make it through. We're just spawning a bit of winch rope out now because that bog hole does look pretty deep. Even though it's got a hard bottom, it's got a really nasty exit where the front's going to be climbing, I think, at the same time as the back. So it means that I'm on an attraction. We're going to sort of prepare, get an extension rope in one of the bigger trees and a um, bit of winch rope out. So when I do, if I get stuck, we'll be able to get out pretty easy. All right, Sean. Now or never, mate. <laughs> Choose never. <laughs> we'll give it a little whirl. Oh, that's, that's a bold move. That's interesting. Here we go then. Sooty's first real test. Oh! No, he might drive it. Front's out, front's out. Oh. <laughs> that was an unreal effort. <laughs> Impressive. Oh, just loved it. On the bop, mate. On the bop. Wowzers. I've got mud on the inside. I had a gap this big and it still come in. With that, Sooty is officially in business. And I've got to say, I'm pretty stoked. That was pretty wild, eh? Yeah. Oh, right back. She's, she's running now. Well, you probably guessed by now, Jesse's in the big D-Max and loving life in that. Graham is at the moment, I think, on the west coast. That's the last postcard I got anyway. I think he's up around Ningaloo somewhere. Anyway, he's having a time of his life. But Jesse, even more so, because he gets to drive Graham's D-Max in a big bog hole. 
First big mud hole of the track in the D-Max. Ease the front end and I might try and feed it in after that. Yeah. <laughs> you got the you got the Tassie paint code, mate. <laughs> Have a winch. Tassie bog holes are notorious for ruts that are cut up by 35, even 37 tyres. Jesse's just gotten a bit hung up here, but with the nose of the D-Max already cleanly over the lip, the Runva has him up and out in no time. Well, Tony's up next and I've really got a soft spot for his vehicle. It's a beautifully built 80 series and something you might not know about it, he's recently just converted it to an FTE. So, tell you what, it ticks all the boxes. He's about to come through here and something tells me he's going to give it apes. Second gear. He's coming in hot. Oh. Go back a little bit. Stop there. Stop there. And go, have a little go from there. Try and bounce it. Oh, how's the clutch oh. up on it? Holy oh, yeah. heck. Yeah. You nearly got it. You nearly got it. Oh, you were oh, so, so close. You have to go back again. That's what 300 horsepower in a diesel yeah. sounds like. That's it. That's it. Oh, whoa! Oh, 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 Wow. All right, Pete's up next, and he's just seen two Toyota 80 Series rocket up there. So something tells me he's going to be choosing probably, I reckon, Ultimate 9. If they had Ultimate 15, he'd be choosing that one too, but he'd be using every ounce of power in that three litre to get to the top. Here we go, here we go. This is all Pete. It's like Victorian mud. Yeah, yeah. Tasmania. This is like Talangi yeah. all over again. Now, a three litre patrol is not exactly a powerhouse, but Pete has got a way of finding lines that nobody else can. There it goes. Yeah, that's the line. It's spicy. And sure enough, Pete's found a whole new way to climb out of this one. Yes, 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 yes. Whoa. He's done it, he's done it. <laughs> Wowzers. <laughs> Not sure what was going on there. Yes. Well, you've driven three quarters of the track, mate. You didn't come quite to the top, but that's all right. Very I cool. ended up before and Pete said, no, that won't work, and then you end up doing it. <laughs> oh, actually, if I'm honest, no troubles get me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got, you got out of that pretty easy, Pete. Uh, what are these things you got back here? You didn't have to use them, but what are they for? Bilge pumps. Bilge pumps. So when, when I heard we're coming to Tassie, I've seen you blokes down, or Shauna and the blokes down here before, and the holes look endless. Yeah, they so do, they do. You've well, come prepared. I try and do myself a favour. If I can keep the water out of my yeah. cab, it'll be a good trip. Sounds good to me. Well, I hope I get to see him in action, but I also don't want to see you stuck, so maybe <laughs> we'll just well, stop I'm on a creek hoping. and do a wash. Good idea. Thanks, boys. Good drive. You Very made good. proud, mate. Now, when it comes to power, this rig might just take the cake. Righto, just the noise of this thing idling. The boys are starting to take a hike into the scrub. And I'm going to join him in a second. Ruben's coming through. Always entertaining to watch. I'll just leave it there. I better get out of here. Last car, loudest car. <laughs> <laughs> he'll get his front up and he'll get towy and then he'll grab gears and press buttons. <laughs> It'll happen. You know Ruben. Yeah. <laughs> The Y62 is an amazing build, but it's also a big rig, and there's a lot of things that it can get caught up on. I'll 
Try me front locker. Yeah, he's got it. Got it. Scared. I'm, I'm marrying you at the moment. <laughs> Going back, Ruben, hard right hand down, hard right hand down and back. Yeah, oh, a little bit more, a little bit more. Stop there, stop there, go hard left, hard left. We're just trying to get Ruben in a better spot so all his wheels aren't climbing at the same time, but different wheelbase, it's kind of making it a little bit tricky. Ruben's now on a similar line to Pete, but things go a little differently. Wowzers. The, the tyre bead just popped a little bit, but it came back on, which is really lucky. So he's still got air in the tyre. Oh, well, he's gonna have another go. I believe this. The Y62 is on a wild angle, but Ruben's got some, well, big coconuts and he isn't giving up yet. You've got a winch up the front there if you want it. <laughs> Stop there. Oh, you're back in now. Yeah, let's have a winch. I'll get it up a bit more and we'll winch from there yeah. straight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I concede defeat. Well, that was one heck of an attempt, but the winch is coming out and we can all start breathing again. We're only a few hundred metres into the track and already the rigs have got the full Tassie paint job. And right up ahead is another bit of track that looks absolutely mental. What do you reckon, boys? What's his chances? Yeah, I reckon he's better, right? Yeah. What do you reckon? I reckon he's feeling good after that last drive. He's got a good chance. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Maybe not. Ooh. Bit more wood. Are you taking up in third? Yeah. I can take up in second because it's real dully and then it comes on and pulls you down. All right, we'll give that a go. This rut is just next level. An undercut diff catching number with zero traction. It just, it took off quicker, but you're just diffing out hard. Yeah, not gonna quite make it. But as it turns out, I might have bigger problems. Got a little pressure. What was that? Oh, it doesn't sound real healthy. Oh, it does, doesn't it? Right? Yeah. What's that sound? It sounds rattly, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, that. Listen to that. Can you hear that? Yeah. That's not good. That's oh. strange. Pop the... Pop your hood. Just, is there no oil? I don't know what it is, but it doesn't sound good. Now Sooty had a fresh engine rebuild right before the trip, but like any build there's always some last minute niggles that need to be ironed out. But this one seems a little bit more serious. Oh yeah. Loose flywheel maybe? Like oh, it's got a massive exhaust leak down there. That that wouldn't be that noise, but that doesn't sound good at all. Best case scenario it could be an injector knock, but it doesn't really sound like an injector knock. Oh hang on. There's, a, there's an injector leak. Is there? That could definitely, yeah. that will make it rattle. Yeah. yeah, so it's below the injector. What's that? That's off the... Yeah, definitely. And, and and there's fuel. That's coming out the... I need to tap that up. I reckon that's loose. That's, oh yeah? It's dripping? So, yeah, it's yep. dripping. There was just a bit of a weird noise and it's a pretty fresh engine. I wasn't going as hard as I possibly could with the motor, but it was making a bit of a knocking noise, which is pretty confronting when you got a, on a new 80. But what we think it might be, is we can see some bubbling coming out of the injector. So I think it's leaking on the six injector there, which might just be a little nip up and we'll be back in the game, I reckon. No four wheel driver wants to think about worst case scenario. Right. So while things aren't looking great, at this stage, I've got to remain hopeful. The injector is soon nipped up, but that knock hasn't gone away. One of the last minute kinks in the build was getting the oil pressure gauge working. And the vehicle's been running pretty good, but if it's lost oil pressure now, this would be a huge problem. 
it's more knockier than it would it be injector knock. Injector's more of a, like a missing knock. Cool. And you can see it in the exhaust smoke too. Yeah. Well, we did tighten that injector line a little bit and there was dripping fuel, there's no doubt about it, but it does sound a little bit more sinister, a little bit knocky, which is a um, bit of a concern at the moment. What we're gonna do is just try and tow it out. I don't particularly wanna drive it. And we don't know yet, we need to really, to, to really find that out. We need to pull the sump off and have a good look, but um, we're not gonna do that here in this bog hole, that's for sure. So we'll close the bonnet, we'll turn this around and um, we're not too far on the track, so we'll be able to get to the road pretty easy. And see what we do next. Fingers crossed. I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty gutting. It's been such a long road to get this rig up and running, but the best thing to do right now is to get Sooty to somewhere where we can properly diagnose these issues and see what's really going on. That noise has just got worse. dramatically worse. Yep. You boys picked it up pretty quick then. For now, I'm not too keen on running the engine in case we cause further damage. It's time to engage the DMW tow service and get Sooty out to the road. Very quiet when there's no engine going. Day one of Sooty Mark II's life on the tracks hasn't exactly gone to plan. It's clear that we've got a bit of time and the tools ahead of us to get to the bottom of this problem. But first, we need a spot to park up. Not far up the road is an absolute gem of a campsite by the name of Lake McIntosh. And it's as good a place as any to camp for the night and make a plan. Well, today, big day on the tracks. It was a lot of highs and a couple of lows. There's obviously something not quite right with Big Sooty, which um, can't quite put my finger on just yet. But all I know is I'm not gonna solve it tonight. I'm gonna set camp up, have a cold beer, have a bit of a think about it around a campfire and see what we do in the morning. But for now, this is one of the most stunning campsites in Australia. So I'm gonna just sit back and take it all in. Tassie might be best known for its mud and rain but it can also produce afternoons like this. Absolute perlers. Soon we've got a fire cranking and a beer in hand. And while it might not be quite the day I was hoping for, the adventure is far from over yet. Now, Jesse must be really feeling sorry for me because he's put himself on chef duties. This bloke is one of the best wheelers and spanner monkeys you'll find anywhere. But for his chefing skills, well, <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see. I'm in a predicament here. <laughs> We're not up to a good start. I went to open Ruben's brand new oil and the, the ring right. will come off. It's a, it, look, it's a trap for young players, mate. I, I say, just don't be so harsh when you're pulling, Jesse. Just, just take it nice and easy, bud. I've been it's told a, that before. So you've got a fair bit of heat going. Yeah. You've got no oil yet. It's never you just go over there and sit down, all right? Yeah, righto. It's gonna be a long night. <laughs> coming in hot, mate, they're coming in hot. Holy heck, what's going on here? Look, you're probably not gonna be happy with it. I'd recommend sitting in the dark when you eat it, but <laughs> food's got, food at this time of the night. We've got burnt sausages and poached steaks. I love this. <laughs> We're simple, man, it's a simple feed. Get it I in like here. I like it, I like it. Jesse, you've excelled yourself, mate. <laughs> You've got a heap of talents. Yep. Probably not one of them, but <laughs> you done all right. Practice makes perfect, eh? <laughs> it's been a huge first day down here in Tasmania, but tomorrow the real work begins. I've got my fingers crossed that we can find a solution for Sooty's engine dramas, because if not, this might be the end of my trip. Guys, hope you enjoyed our Tasmanian episode. I've got to say, it's one of the best trips I've probably ever done and certainly put more grey hairs on my head than any bloke should ever have to face. But right now, I want to interrupt just for two seconds that you know about a wicked deal we have on fullwheeldrive247.com. If you're after a winch, and trust me, if Tassie's on your bucket list, you're going to need one. 
13 XP run but you can save over $100 right now on our website. Plus, there's heaps of really cool deals. So do yourself a favor, get yourself a gift or even somebody else. Jump on to fullride247.com right now. Just wanted to let you know that right now you can save yourself 50 bucks on a VMS 3DX GPS kit. Fantastic for finding those hidden tracks, secret campsites, or just basically not getting lost out bush. 50 bucks off, but you're only gonna get it from one spot. FullDrive247.com. In the morning light comes a gutting realization. Off camera, we've been hot on the phones with mechanics, wreckers, an engine builder. We've even had some of the local turners and fitters come out to check the engine. And the conclusion, well, it's a bad one. Well, one it's up this morning and a little bit gutted to be honest. Hasn't exactly turned out the way I'd hoped for. I mean, this has been such a huge build and so much effort by a lot of people to get it to here. And yesterday on the track, I'm sure you would have realized we just turned it off because I actually lost oil pressure and that's that's something you don't want to happen. Yeah, definitely. You Ever don't want to keep it. running after that. On a new diesel as well, it's you know, a fresh motor and we just erred on the on the safe side. We've made every phone call under the sun, we've spoken to a lot of people, we've done our best to try and diagnose it. I probably shouldn't have Yeah, I don't know. We'll probably shut this bonnet, mate. I might make a couple of calls, get Sweetie on a tow truck, and if it's okay with you, I'm not going home. Um, I'm going to ride in with you. And yeah, you might be able to teach me a thing or two. Anyway, <laughs> that guess. wouldn't be hard, mate. But <laughs> <laughs> look, I, I, yeah, it's gutting, mate. It really is gutting. It is. I feel for you. It's um, that's that's the reality, though. Four-wheel drives, playing with vehicles, um, building cars. This this sort of stuff happens. You can't can't be too upset. This is part of the parcel. So anyway, let's shut this down. What we suspect has happened is looking like the worst case scenario. It's possible the bottom end knock means that Sooty has spun a big end bearing. If that's the case, turning that engine off yesterday and playing it safe was the right call because any more driving and revving could make the engine literally detonate and throw a conrod out the side of the block or at least seize the engine, which would truly mark the end of Sooty for a long time. Bit of a rough day for Sean, be for anybody to be honest. You know, having a, something go wrong with your car after all those months of uh, building it and all that sort of stuff. So, my contribution to uh, him feeling like crap today is I'm going to cook him a good feed. Ruben's got his slide-out kitchen cranking this morning with a bit of a feed on the menu. How yeah, good does this smell, eh? After so much work to get Sooty on the road, it's hard to express just how disappointing this is. But all I can do now is pack up and get my stuff into another vehicle as the convoy's newest passenger. There's nothing like a hot meal to put a brighter spin on the day. And as the sun comes out, a ray of hope soon pops up too, because we might have come up with a bit of a solution. We've been scouring the island for another engine and we reckon we might have found one. So he might not be out of the game yet. But first things first, we're gonna get out of here. go. That was a great little camp last night. Stunning little spot. It's just a shame what's happened but there's a little glimmer of hope because we made a few phone calls this morning. We met a few locals down in Rosebury and they're just awesome people. Like the sort of people that would do anything for you and um, they've been making some calls to some of their friends and some of their friends friends and what might have happened is you might have tracked down uh, a 1HZ motor. Um, now, one I said motor will fit into old sooty. It's a turboed one as well. And if that's the case, look, it's going to be a long shot. We'll need to get that motor out of a vehicle. We'd need a workshop. We'd need um, some help probably. But just maybe there's a glimmer of hope that sooty might run on its own steam again and not have to go back home to Queensland. Like I said, the people down here are just absolute legends. And not only is an engine possibly on its way up, we've also had a workshop pop up in Burnie who are willing to handle the install. And a few hours later, we've gotten Sweetie to Burnie fuel injection and they're dropping everything to try and help us get the 80 back on the road. Heath and the boys live and breathe all thing diesel repairs and they reckon if the other engine's in good nick, they can have the whole thing swapped over in just 24 hours. 
Well, how's this for a bit of a plot twist? Um, from the bush one moment, organising uh, flat toes back to Queensland, contacted Heath from Bernie Fuel Injection and um, the boys are more than willing to basically help us out in a real pickle. And when I say help us out, I mean every, like drop tools, get onto Sooty, um, been able to locate a 1HZ in Hobart, yep. some 350 k's away, and um, that's getting pulled out as we speak. That's gonna be driven over here. It's pretty amazing, because this is, this is uh, this that doesn't happen. This doesn't happen. This is a, nothing short of a miracle, and um, these boys are the experts to do it as well. So, mate, I can't thank you enough. Um, Thanks, look, mate. I know we're not out of the woods yet. It's a bit of a, let's, we'll see. We'll see what condition the other engine is in and all I the rest of it. It's a bit of an unknown, but you know, we'll just suck it and see. And That's all we can do at this stage, mate. I just really appreciate it. I just <laughs> no, really no appreciate it. So we'll see you guys real soon. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be driving sooty. Yeah, sounds oh, good, buddy. Can't thank you enough, man. <laughs> no worries. Now here at Four Wheel Drive 24-7, we like to spin spanners as much as anyone. And while we're not trained mechanics, we're pretty handy on the tools. But sometimes you have gotta get an expert in. Now the boys are exactly that, plus they have a full workshop at their disposal. Doing an engine conversion on the side of a track in Tasmania where it's likely to rain every second hour is not something we wanna try and take on. And so while they crack on, we're heading back to finish what we started yesterday, the Ring River track. There is so much of this track to see, and this time I get to ride shotgun with the man himself. Mate, come along for a ride, eh? Come along for a ride. I'm looking forward to it, mate. You know, at this stage, it's better than the bus. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> time to shine, time to shine. I feel like I need a harness when I ride with you, Jesse. <laughs> I feel like that too. This time around, we're starting the track on a different entry, which brings us right out to the hill climb where it all went wrong yesterday. And just like that, Almost 24 hours later, we're back where we started, and this time, it's Jesse's turn for a crack up the climb. I should probably mention now, I'm not a great passenger. Yeah, this is a tricky bit, the track. Oh my goodness, you're not doing this, but you're not doing this, Murray, are you? I was going to try, but I don't think it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to work. I, I shouldn't say that as your navvy, I should be full of confidence. I prefer to have the arse. <sighs> A little bit scary. You need that rear to get up there. Yeah, it's it? just not doing it. Jock and Jesse both froth on technical wheeling and have done some pretty impressive drives in the D-Max. Jesse really wants that right hand line, but getting the rear to follow is a challenge. We might just have to go up the gut. Yeah, rear overhang might. It's good go. It was a good go. <laughs> That's us. Just like I was yesterday, the D-Max is getting pretty hung up on this one, and it's out with the runver. Jesse's, uh, he's got forward driver's optimism. <laughs> he's very confident behind the wheel. He has some fantastic ideas about driving certain lines that, quite frankly, scare the heck out of me. <laughs> Straddling that rut was not something I would have done in the D-Max. Yeah, it's I good. I as far as did, so that's a good effort, I reckon. Yeah, well, you'll probably get further now. <laughs> Jesse's not the only one to struggle here though. Both Tony and Ruben have had the same problem despite their extra clearance and big tyres. I reckon I just might winch over that last bit. It doesn't feel like it's gonna walk it. If there's one bloke who could make this one stick though, it's gotta be Pete. The Ultimate 9 rig has got a little trick up its sleeve for this challenge, and that's a dampened throttle. Jesse found a bit of an ambitious lawn. He couldn't quite tackle in the D-Max, but Pete is trying to straddle this rut. I wanna see this, it's pretty wild. This is pretty wild. That's cool. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Yes! 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 <laughs> and you guys told me that wasn't going to work. Well, I didn't even think that would work, to be honest. <laughs> there was a line there. There's a couple of things really cool about that drive. Obviously, taking that line is, is that's cool. That's really cool. You avoided all the ruts by doing that, but it was quite committing. Now, what he did actually is dampen the throttle down to E2. That gives him really doughy throttle, so he can be really controlled through here. But he was able to, on the fly, as you saw, you needed lots of power to get up here, so straight to ultimate nine, bang, and instant throttle response, mate. You happy? Yeah, I'm happy that worked. He's had no faith in that line. 
This is a cool bit of track because just up ahead is a very fast flowing Tasmanian river. And uh, you can see on the VMS right here, the track is taking us straight to that river. And it looks like the track ends, but it picks up a little bit down south. One of the unique features of this track is this river crossing that you have to drive 100 metres down it to pick up the track again. And at this point, the track becomes a whole different beast. Oh, what have we got up here? Oh yeah, that's not super easy. Yeah, good stuff. That's the line, I believe. Whoa! <laughs> Hiya! That's the oh. sidestep, is it? Yep. We'll back back and reassess. Have another look. You've got to pick a line that suits your rig, and Jesse's going for an option that hopefully stops the D-Max from hanging up. Yeah, I'll spot you up. The track is pretty greasy right now, and those rocks are really slippery, yep. but there's a line in it for sure if he gets it just right. Bit of, as you come up, bit of left. If I go left, yep. that front right go in the hole though, no, and then bury it out. No, as you come forward, another foot, turn left and drive up here. Bounce a lot. That was a pretty ominous bang from under the D-Max, but once it's winched up, we'll be able to get a better idea of the problem. It's a track that keeps on giving. Lots of little tough spots through here. The D-Max came so close, but the clearance got the better of it. Hell there. Is the front wheel spinning? No. Nah. CV. Between us, we've seen a few broken CVs in our time, but something here doesn't add up. There's no visible brake on either CV, but there's also no drive to the front wheels. Well, Sean's just spinning there, spinning the wheels, so I can have a look as well. And um, neither of the inner CV cups are spinning, the tail shaft here, so that means the problem is the diff centre, which is a bit of an issue for us, because we've got three spare CVs and no spare diff centres. It really doesn't matter if we've blown up the front diff or we've smashed a CV because either way, we're only going to be getting drive to the rear. Which means on a track like this, it's almost impossible to drive on your own steam. Chances are it's a diff, but if we are super lucky, two CVs are broken at the same time. I'm never this lucky off road. Let's we'll see. Can see up the hill a bit now if you can. That's good, that's good. That's it. That's it. Ruben's taken the same line as the D-Max, but with that massive clearance, he's been able to creep on through. Really bound up that front end. That was easy with the extra couple of cylinders, Ruben. This is a wild climb already, but towing is a whole lot more hectic. Wheels are waving left, right and centre, but the boys are getting the job done, and up ahead is a section that could catch them out. You all right, Jesse? Yeah, I'm good. Well, I'm just going to give it another crack from here. I just winched myself over this bit. Yeah, good idea, Evan. Sure, coming up. This track is always a challenge, but this time around it's really kicking our butts. This has all the potential for turning into a night run, and all we can do is keep pushing on. Hey, Jesse, once I um, give you a bit of a snatch, I'm going to have to keep on driving and commit to this up here. Yeah, copy, copy, copy. Once I get up, I'll try and get some slack on the strap for you. There's rut after rut on this climb, and right near the top, we've got another problem. Well, tyres off the bead. We give it a red hot shot. 
just didn't quite have enough while Jesse's coming up that other bit I've got another rock face to climb we're pretty we're pretty steep here oh you're right slippery <laughs> <laughs> not just the vehicles are struggling for traction with the light fading we've got to get a rattle on and while I help the Y62 up this section the back of the convoy is also on the move all right there's a little bit of a step here let's see what she wants to do This Mint 80 is Tony's daily driver, and he absolutely loves it. And what's not to love, it's one of the best 80s you'll ever see. But after taking a big hit to the bar work, he's also opted for the safe way out. I might uh, winch from there, I think. That just leaves Pete. We've officially run out of daylight just halfway along this track, but at last we're starting to have a few wins. That's it straight. Give it a, give it a little bit. Well done, well done. Where do we go, got there in the end. Too easy. <laughs> <laughs> the best news of all though is under the D-Max. A second inspection on a better angle has revealed a less problematic breakage than we first thought. This is actually a really good sign. Now, normally when you need to fix the car on the side of the track, never a good sign, <laughs> but it's a good sign for this reason. Because Jesse's just been under there, we can confirm a broken CV. I've never been so happy about a broken <laughs> CV in all my life, because it means it's not the front diff, hopefully. We thought we had much bigger problems, let's give it a bit of a wiggle, and we couldn't actually see the break, it was inside the diff, but I managed to pull it out. So, That's... we've only got one broken CV, we do have spares, so we're going to fix it here and well, we don't keep going up the track. And then we get to do a night run. <laughs> <laughs> How good? It is good, mate, it is good. <laughs> Learning to change a CV is just one of those skills you'll never regret having and of course carrying a few spares is absolutely essential. In this case, we've also used the rumber to secure the vehicle to a tree while it's up on a jack, just to keep everything safe. And Jesse soon has the old CV out. That's it right there, clean snap on the inner axle. Should be an easy fix though. It's out with the old and in with the new, and the D-Max is soon ready to roll again under its own steam. Bring on the night run, I say. Must be nice to have full ride back. <laughs> The second half of the Ring River track is a maze of tight climbs and suspicious looking bog holes. Even in the day, these can be daunting, but tackling them in the dark definitely adds another element. Up ahead is a bog that looks like it's ready to swallow a four wheel drive hole. You cannot put that stick through to the, like, it's mud. Well, this is very ominous. This is scary as. Well, this is a pretty wild bog hole to see at this time of night, and there is a way around it. However, now, we're gonna try and go around it, but if you do slip off, the problem is, you're gonna go straight down, you're gonna be at a gnarly angle, and Ruben's about two and a half metres wide, so, a bit going on. Aside from the risk of sliding into a metre deep hole, this tree is also proving that it's gonna be a bit of a panel massager if you get too close and winching both from the front and rear is required to get through. It's rinse and repeat for Tony's 80, but for the last rig, this line isn't gonna be an option because there's no more rear winches. Luckily, Pete's installed bilge pumps. 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, about to drive through the, uh, looks like the bog of death. It's a long one. I'm the only one to drive through it. I reckon I'm going to sharpen up the accelerator as quick as I can, so I've got instant response, so I get as much power down as I can, 
young Jesse's going to run my cable along the side of the bank and hopefully, hopefully we don't need it, but I think we will. It's probably not one of the smartest ideas. Well, Pete, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited about this drive, mate. I'm really keen to see you give it a go. I think all the precautions are taken, mate. What's your plan? You get this feeling that it's not a good idea, don't you? I've got that feeling right now as I sit here looking at it. My plan is first gear, keep it up in the revs, and hopefully if things, you know, we, we pull to a stop, which we probably will, Jesse's going to be like a whippet on the, uh, the wire. So, fingers crossed, eh? I like it, mate. It sounds good. I want to get well out of the way just in case. You good, Jess? Both Jesse and Pete have done their share of winch truck racing over the years, and it shows. Pete's on the move again almost as soon as he stopped. That bit was always going to be pretty hard. Well, that's it. We got through. That was pretty quick. Very impressive. I think that was almost bound to happen, but that's the thing when you're ready. Got out of strife pretty easy. A couple of boys who have done that before, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe just once or twice. It's well past midnight before we're nearing the end of the track. And this has been one I reckon none of us will forget in a hurry. Oh, she turned it on right at the end of the track. How good is this? Ring River track ticked off the bucket list. Absolutely bloody epic. I've got to say, this has been an epic night. Anywhere in Tasmania is usually pretty epic, but with the boys, <laughs> things have happened, breakages, We've had trackside repairs, you name it. I think we need to get to camp though. It's getting a bit late. And if you're wondering why I'm smiling just that little bit extra tonight, well, not just because of the tracks. I've got a tiny bit of reception and the boys might have some good news regarding Sooty. So hopefully, fingers crossed. It's not out of the woods just yet, but I'm pretty darn optimistic. Every once in a while, a crazy plan actually works. Early this Arvo, the motor we found in Hobart has arrived at the Bernie workshop and Heath, Jared, Jed, George and Chris have been hard at work on the install. They've pulled some crazy hours and there's still some work to be done. But in the morning, we got the call that Sooty could be up and running later today. Last night we camped at Lake McIntosh again and we've got a few hours up our sleeve. I've got a special meal I want to make for the boys at camp tonight and for that I need some local ingredients. Lucky enough, before the trip, I teed up with my mate Jarvis to take me out for a cast. And now, I've got the perfect excuse. How good is this? Jarvis has been kind enough to take me out in his tub on this beautiful lake and hopefully we can catch a trout. Now, I'm very excited to do this. I haven't had the great track record with catching trout down in Tasmania and hopefully my luck changes today. The whole plan here today is to try and tangle with a couple of trout. Now, they've been a bit of a nemesis fish for me. I haven't caught many in my time, but I mean, look where we are. This is about as good as it gets. If we can get a trout, I'll tell you what, it'd be pretty cool. I'll just snag your spot then too, just straight in. There's one. Hey, look at that. That is a good trout. That's a great trout. Have a look at the yeah. colors on him. If you don't mind, mate, I'd love to make him an ingredient because yep. that's, a, that's a solid little brown trout. Jarvis is soon showing me up and he's hooked trout practically hey, every second hey. cast. Look out. <laughs> Still counts. I noticed you didn't want me to net him for you. Gorgeous. You know, that's, that'd probably be my PB brown trout. <laughs> so far, all I've managed to hook is a tree and now Jarvis is just showing off. <laughs> you give me a bit of a touch up here, mate. I'm going to start pulling my finger out, but I'll tell you what, it's a good sign. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I'm feeling a bit of pressure now. Oh, yep. Oh, I dropped him. Oh, there he goes. Whoa. You're kidding. The wheel wasn't even in the water. That was my side of the boat, too. Gee. I'm changing lures. It takes me a while to get mine, but at last I'm getting some results. 
Yep. Yep. Oh no. Oh yes! <laughs> yeah! Oh, that's a real one. That's the old trout dance. Oh wow. Look at the size of that. That's a nice fish, mate. A really nice fish. That's PB brown trout. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I'm so stoked. If it's okay by you, this might become an ingredient as well. That's a beautiful brown trout, folks. <laughs> Not to be outdone, Jarvis has ended the day with an absolute stonker. Last cast, lucky last cast. <laughs> Insane. What a way to just wrap it up like that with fish of the day, bang. We're out. I tell you, Tassie really does have it all. What a magical place. That is a huge personal bucket list item done and dusted for me, but right now we've got other fish to fry because it's time to go and find out if Sooty is alive once more. Now we are on the way to Burnie to go see Sooty hopefully and uh, fingers crossed we might even be driving it today. So that's a pretty insane turnaround. Hurry up mate, hurry up. I can hear the sound of a turbo that? diesel Toyota. <laughs> this is pretty exciting stuff. She's running. Well, this is nothing short of a miracle because in probably less than 24 hours, these guys have done a full 1HZ engine conversion. All hooked up to my intercooler. See, so we've got the same intake as old Sooty as well. You can be a listen if you know your Toyotas, it just sounds slightly different. That's the 1HZ, but how yeah, good because I'm back on the tracks as of now. That, that doesn't happen, by the way. A 24 hour engine conversion just doesn't simply happen. These boys have done amazing. After an overnight effort like that, a few frothies are in order for the boys who have truly pulled out all the stops to get this done. Well, Heath, boys, thanks so much. These boys pulled a near all nighter, get this vehicle on the road, and they're so particular as well, just checking everything's not going to let me down. And um, look, just the fact it's running, I'm absolutely stoked, mate. You, you pulled the absolute rabbit out of a hat. It's a miracle, mate. No, uh, really mate, appreciate it. Really thanks, appreciate buddy. it. All right. Yeah, exciting. <laughs> If you're ever in this neck of the woods and need some four-wheel drive repairs, I reckon you know now who you're going to see. See you boys, <laughs> back on the road. The boys have been pretty patient waiting for me and Sooty today, and it's time to meet back up and check out our camp for the night. Hey, <laughs> boys, I'm back, I'm back, and I'm super stoked about that. I reckon on the camp, fellas, and a uh, couple of cold beers, and I'll even... I've got a bit of a feed. This mad little camp was a recommendation from the guys at the workshop, a perfect riverside spot not too far from the Ring River track. Now the weather forecast is for a huge rain dump tonight, but I reckon that's not going to dampen the mood today. I've got to be honest with you, it's pretty darn Nice to be camping back out of Sooty tonight. And it's a great little spot as well. We've never actually camped here before. It's beautiful, absolutely stunning. And these are the sort of campsites you find all around Tasmania. They're just a dime a dozen and they're all stunning. And most of the time you get them yourself on the West Coast. But this is not the only treat for the boys, the campsite. Tonight I'm gonna be cooking up an absolute treat. It's hard to believe we're only three days into our Tassie adventure. It's been action packed for sure, but what's coming up next could be the highlight of the trip and hopefully for all the right reasons. Dinner's up boys. Well, how good is this at camp and not only at camp, but camping out of the back of Sooty. Tonight, I'm gonna to cook something very special for the lads because they've been very patient over this trip. We've done some mad tracks, but at the same time, it's been a little bit of downtime just waiting to get the car all fixed and all that sort of jazz. And obviously, I've caught a beautiful little trout. So the way I'm gonna do this tonight is a bit of a seafood marinara. Not all seafood though, a bit of freshwater fish as well. Firstly, knock the fillets off this guy. This is a beautiful, fresh brown trout. Now what's so special about this is, <laughs> firstly, I've never eaten trout. I've never really targeted trout very much, and it's also my PB trout. So there's a lot of first going on here. I wanted to make like a 
basically a seafood dish that's really Tasmanian and um, some fresh brown trout caught in the local area. I've got some scallops as well, a few other bits and pieces. Experimenting, I suppose. I don't know how many trout, especially brown trout, have ever been in a marinara before. Well, there you go. Trout's all filleted, skinned, and uh, the best I could, I've deboned it. First things first, we'll turn this bad boy on. All right. Get a little bit of heat into that, actually. We'll get some butter going. We can go straight into the pan. I'm gonna grab some garlic as well. Tony, what's going on here, mate? I'm cooking some garlic, mate. I'll use your knife. I filled those trout up. Put a stack of garlic there. That's quite a bit. I'll have a yeah, that. Here we go. I'm going to chuck a bit of salt. So we're going to keep it real simple. I want the flavours of the trout to come out at least. Start. Bit of rain. Bit of rain. You got. You're going to get that in Tassie. All right, they're going to go straight into the pan. Yeah, we're ready. Look at that. Bang. Look at that. Are you going to be rude not to try a piece of trout when it's done because fresh straight off the barbecue? Yep. Have you tried any sashimi yet? I haven't done any sashimi trout. We could we could have a go if you Fresh want. Water sashimi? Oh. I don't know if that's I'll the do thing. It, I'll do it if you do it. <laughs> Tomorrow's track might be the public toilet in Rosebury. <laughs> yeah. Right. Try a little bit of sashimi trout. Never done that before. A lot of firsts tonight. It's my bad. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Oh, that definitely had a pin bone still in it. Yeah, they, <laughs> they got those, those little buggers. Mm. With the salt and pepper, that's delicious. I actually think that was pretty good. That was actually unreal. I'd do that again. I hope I live long enough to do that again. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I was about to eat that little bit of trout on my <laughs> finger. I might just put him to the side, to be honest. <laughs> Beautiful, mate. That is- I reckon we're good. Nice and fast, and you'll you notice it's still pink in the middle. That's what you want at Tones. Yep. There's a little bit of pink in the middle there, mate. And that smells- No Tony, on that one. Tony, <laughs> that's- that smells that fantastic. Does smell fantastic. I'm gonna put that to the side. A lot of the guys, um, you know, I knock about with, mate, wouldn't know what these are Ooh. because we don't really get these much at home. These are Tasmanian scallops, and they're gonna go straight in the pan. Still got the row on there. Yeah, that's the best way. And they're nice and fresh too, mate. Locally caught. These are looking pretty good here. They are. You don't give them long. As soon as you reckon they're done, whack them in with the trout. And look at these, mate. Squid tubes. Oh. Tell you what, this reminds me of a couple of lonely nights. These are a lot bigger than I'm used to. Eh? That wouldn't... You'd fit a couple in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whack them in there, that's beautiful. Good. You don't, don't need long for these guys. Just want a little bit of a sear on these. Yeah, you don't, don't need much, don't need yeah, much. What are you thinking there? Yeah, that, that'll marinara. do it, because it's going to go into a yeah. bit of a marinara a bit later. Oh, we're getting a good mound of seafood. I oh, know, how oh, good's that, that, eh? Look at all this stuff, Sean. I oh, know, we've got seafood, we've got trout. Fresh trout, mind oh, you. Yes, absolutely. I, I saw that fish, mate. I, I can't believe you actually oh, I can't believe I did <laughs> either, mate. Oh, I really can't. Well, I was going to see if you could, on the DMW kitchen, mate, yes. just get some water on the go. Okay. And then um, we'll put some pasta in when that's on the boil. We'll give that to you. But I only put it in once that water is boiling. It went on a full rolling bubble. Yep. And um, I don't even know if it's a thing, but a rolling bubble, I think they, they say it in chef school. Then you whack the pasta in after it's rolling bubbles. <laughs> okay. Rolling boil, I think. It's boil, boil. boil. <laughs> Okay, right. I want to think real hard and fast about this because what's about to go on right now is going to be absolute chaos. Oh, here we it's go. going to be a cul oh, oh, it's already See, started. It yeah. has started. It's begun. It has started. <laughs> yep. Onions got garlic. I'm going to put that straight in. Bang. Now I've got chilies as well. You know the boys are on for a bit of chilies. Yep. Which one of you tones out of that lineup? Uh, probably the smallest one. <laughs> <smoke. laughs> it is cold and dazzy though. You got to. Yeah, you got to allow for shrinkage. Chuck that in. Bang. All that. This is a bit of uh, white wine. We're doing some pretty serious cooking tonight. Oh, yeah. I always say about half a bottle to start with. That's more than half a bottle. Oh, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's a, a lot more. A fair than bit. Half a fair bit. That's looking good. I'm going to chuck in some tomatoes into that. A little bit of posada. That's going to go in all of it. Imagine like a tomato red sauce. Okay, we decided to uh, change the old uh, kitchen. Now, a good chef's got to roll with the punches. That's how yes, that goes. Yes. And uh, at the moment, the rain's just got a tiny bit too heavy. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it got a bit, very damp. Very yeah, a little bit aggressive, if you ask me. That is now coming onto a rolling boil. I just want to have a quick taste of that to see what we're doing. Good use of rolling boil, by the way. I oh, know. I've really set up the notch tonight, haven't I? It's nice. I could just go with just a tiny bit more flavour, <laughs> if that's all right, Pete. Stop it. <laughs> We're a long way from home, mate. We're going to whack the mussels in first. Where did you get those? <laughs> well, yeah, I was free diving. <laughs> free diving from those in uh, Lake McIntosh. I might have to borrow that right, if I can. No, I can. Hey, you were getting into that stirring now. It's the first time that. in the yeah. kitchen. Look at that. No, I just got the mussels to really cook themselves first, because that's the first time I've ever been involved in heat. Bring her in, mate, because this is looking really good. The smells here are fantastic. Oh, oh beautiful. You that. That was a bit of a wild, man. <laughs> so I'm gonna, what are you doing now? I'm going to carefully pour this into here. There's a lot in there. 
There's a lot going on. And I'll just give that a little bit of a, just a little bit of a stir. We've got all sorts of flavors going on here. That is looking absolutely sensational. We've got the pastas mixed in there. We've got mussels. We have the scallops. It's all going on. Boys, get your plates and come in hot because while this is hot, you want to enjoy it. Trust me. Basically give you like something like that. Here we go. Watch yourself. Here Thank you go. Thank you very much, Sue. Look that at that. Looks amazing. Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to try mm. and... That, oh. folks, is a sensational little meal. And it's so easy as well. It's basic ingredients, and it probably takes about 25 minutes to cook on a bad day. Even with a bit of tuzzy rain, but it won't dampen the spirits, mate. Look at the little... You've got scallops, you've got trout, you've got oh. mussels, you've got pasta. And the best thing is we get to hit the tracks tomorrow. Nice. Cheers, Cheers to that. Cheers to that. And I get to drive Sooty as well, mate. Hey. Oh, mate. Hey. I know, I know. I know. I, I usually say about this time of night, let's go sit around the fire, but tonight, let's sit around an awning. Hey. <laughs> How good. It's rained almost the entire night across the west coast, and that could make our objective today a lot more difficult. Get a load of this, guys. It's raining cats and dogs in Tassie, and we sort of expected that. It's gonna make sure that all our camping gear is just that little bit wet up, but one thing is for certain, the track today is gonna to be super slippery, and even in the dry, the next track's gonna be a heck of a challenge. So, can't wait to see what today's gonna to bring, because it's gonna be pretty wild, I reckon. Camping in Tassie is all about mindset, and of course being ready for all weathers. But you know what? I've got a working rig again, so I couldn't be happier. Over the past few days, Sooty hasn't exactly been driving much, but the new 12 volt system is working an absolute treat. Well, that's pretty impressive. This is the first time I've really used the go block in anger out camping, and I've still got full charge. I've been running the fridge, camp lights, all that sort of jazz, but. I suppose it makes sense at the end of the day you've got 100 amp hours of lithium on the go. Pretty impressive, really. With the weather being a bit grim, we're not hanging around this morning. And soon we're ready to push south to another awesome Tassie track. Here we are. <laughs> Beautiful Tasmania. You know, we've been pretty lucky with the weather to be honest with you. Something tells me it's not going to ease up anytime soon. But that's alright. I've got a running vehicle and sometimes you need the little wins in life and that's a pretty big win if you ask me. The next destination on the cards is right down on the coast, which today is totally hidden in a thick blanket of clouds. Now, what you can't see is probably one of the most stunning views in the country right now because of this fog and rain, but trust me when I say this, this is, um, <laughs> it's a beautiful part of the world. Yeah, I've heard some good things about the views, which sad we can't see them today, but I'm still keen to hit this track up. One of my favourite tracks in the country, without a doubt. And uh, all you boys are in for a bit of a treat today because um, Lake Cumberland, mate, it's, it's, it really is a special little track. All right, boys, here's the turn off. Let's get into it. It might be named after the lake at the top, but this track is actually a hectic mountain climb full of big rock gardens and savage ruts. And today, it's even got its own river. Make it to the top though, and there's usually one of the best views you'll find anywhere in the country. Oh, this is wicked! Look at the water come down this track. I'll have to rename this one the waterfall track, I reckon. <laughs> We're in for a bit of a treat today. Nice drive, Jesse. Nice drive, mate. Now, when I say hectic ruts, I don't say that lightly. Check out these bad boys. There's a line in here somewhere, you just gotta find it. Big wheel lift. Go, go back. It's quite a wheel lift, might have come over a bit. Yeah. Yeah, if you come over like a tie width, it'll be a ramp then. Yeah, then steer this way now, and just come forward. It takes a couple of resets to find the right wheel placement, but when I do, so he just crawls up like a beast. More that way, more that way, more that way. Beautiful. 
This track calls for careful technical wheeling, and this is just the entry. Nice. Yeah, now, oh, no. Nice clutch control, mate. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Now start swinging back to the left. Beautiful. Hard right and come over, you should be right. Well done, mate. Beautifully done. Perfect. You can go left now. <laughs> Up ahead, we start to get into the bigger challenges. Three days ago, Sooty was neat and shiny. Today, not so much. Bit of traction there, you just gotta get really close to the bank. Oh, I might have taken some paint off the flares then, but you know what? Doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's a little bit wild with the wet weather. You know things are getting serious when everyone stops talking and Tony's got the game face on trying to keep the 80 off the bank. It's nice and slow. That was good mate, very good. There's some interesting angles on this track. It, it, it is mate. And I it's, managed to keep it off the doors though. Which you did, the bar workers pay for itself again mate. Yet again. There's really a time that the three litre patrol doesn't surprise the heck out of us, and today is no exception. Pete's always been a bit on the fence when it comes to sliders on his rig, but today they're coming in super handy. It's a whole different experience in Ruben's rig, and it's possible that this is one of the biggest four wheel drives to ever attempt this track. Man, I'm gonna try a different line to everybody. Very tight, but we got her. With that, we're in the trees and onto the real fun stuff of the Cumberland track. Well, this is officially the start of the track. You start to get enclosed in the trees here, and there's still a waterfall running down the middle of it. So, we're about to enter a rock garden, which is going to be. A bit of fun. The rain is turning this track into a full water course and it adds a whole new dimension of challenge to an already slippery climb. Yeah, it's a cool little rock garden, real technical. You've got to squeeze your way through these rocks, pick a good line, and I think traction's going to be a little hard to get, something tells me. Such a fun track, this one. Something that's worth noting, especially if you're building a vehicle for terrains like this where you know you're going to get a lot of mud, water, dust, dirt, all those harsh elements that we sort of drive around in is try and make sure your gear is waterproof. And I mean your 12 volt accessories. Um, I'm running, of course, GME in cab system, but this one here is actually properly IP rated. It's good knowing this is fully waterproof, dust proof, and no matter what I do to this vehicle, if I flood it, even though it's located down right near the center console there, that it's not going to hurt it because it is ready to sort of tackle those conditions. Bit of a tricky climb here. Big boulders everywhere. Bit of banging and clanging, but we got up. This is one of those tracks that you really don't want to tackle unless you're ready for a few possible dents and scratches. And of course, you've got to be prepared to drive down it later again. But get it right, it's just so much fun to drive. Did I say fun? I meant to say insane. Just look at those rocks. Well, this late Cumberland track, the further up the hill you get, the more wild it gets. All us boys just had to coach Sean to actually get in the car and give this a go. This is a gnarly little rock garden. One way to break Sooty in is take her up here. The 
massive rock under your slider. Is it? Yeah, if you go back, I'll try to move it. Did I go? Can't go back much that way, you're on the bank. You can see here just how quick things can go wrong in a place like this. And now, I'm on a pretty awkward angle. And the view's still there, because yep. there's just a big rock in front of you. And then once the front goes up, or well, the back goes up, sorry, steer back around the rock. Yeah. Well, close. Very, Very close. Well, you're going to have to give it a fair bit of port, yeah. it's just a big rock. Stop there, yeah, stop. Yeah, go more right. Yeah. Gotta say, I'm loving how Sooty's driving. This is a pretty sketchy little track. I'm getting some pretty good spotting as well, but it's just hard to keep on line with the, all the rocks. Very impressive drive. These conditions are wild. That's not going anywhere, that's too big to move. Jesse is always up for a challenge, but this is an insane place to test out a stockish tourer. I guess it's lucky it's Graham's vehicle. The rocks on this section of the track are probably bigger than the actual tyres on the D-Max. So wish me luck. It's gonna go slow and steady, and if I got a winch, I'll winch, because I want to try and preserve the car for the rest of this track. It. You got a big rock here, you can see that one. Driving a track like this takes a mixture of care and commitment, and Jesse has both in spades. That's it. That's it. Can I go back much or is that in the bank? No. Nah. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. You got a massive big rock behind you. Well, that was a great drive to get it this far. It's just really hard with the clearance of the D-Max. This is a family tour at the end of the day with 31 inch tires, 32 inch tires. It's not designed to drive tracks like this, but Jesse's made it this far, which is pretty sensational. Make no mistake, this is one of the harder tracks you'll find anywhere on the West Coast. And in fact, Australia. And the D-Max has done pretty well to make it this far. Well, that was pretty wild. Big rocks, little tyres, lots of line picking, a couple of winches as well. Absolutely phenomenal drive, mate. Yeah, yeah D-Max a bit out of depth, we got it up. How good. <laughs> you know what, we're, we're laughing now, boys, but we've got this wild switchback. It's what this track's famous for, this huge big switchback, and I've never seen it this bad. Of course, everyone's playing, you guys are next. Well, look, I, uh, I brought my pink undies today. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think I'm gonna different do it. every day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. I'm getting uh, bellied out on a few things and all that sort of stuff, and a bit extra weight with the canopy. For me, mate, it's my daily drive. Yeah, I get that it. That looks pretty hairy. I get there. it. Well, boys, I think you made some good decisions. I reckon, Pete, you come up next, mate, and we'll, we'll figure out to do the switchback. We've got plenty more tracks coming up over the next week in Tasmania, and you've got to know what you're comfortable tackling in your rig. Pete's last one up this section in true form. He's nailing it. Nice. Good stuff, Pete. Yeah, that's done. A few metres ahead is the real clincher of this track. It's a terrifying switchback that involves almost a 180 turn back up the bank and a committing punt to the top. But this year it's really washed out and it's looking harder than we've ever seen it. And it's going to take some pretty big kahunas to tackle it. Well, this is the infamous switchback on the Lake Humberland track. Now, in previous years, you drive straight up here, you do a U-turn and you Hug this bank as close as you can because this is really off cambered and there'd be a nasty rollover if you did go over. But at the moment, it's so washed out here, that's not even an option. So we've probably got to come up, get up high on the bank and then turn into it and then use your winch to try and stop yourself from flipping over. 
gonna be absolutely wild. What do you reckon, Jesse? Yeah, it's gonna be absolutely wild. You <laughs> summed it up quite well. <laughs> I'm glad you're first. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this switch back scares the absolute heck out of me. It's just, I, at the moment where I sit, I don't see how I can get up there. Well, we're gonna have to just see what happens, I think. Well, I'm actually nervous about this one. Like, really nervous. This is wild. This one is all about getting your starting point perfect because you've got to turn your rig on a dime to get the right angle for the switch back. Oh, this is wild, man. <laughs> That's falling in. So now you've got a, a rock behind your bar, so you're sort of stuck in that position. Can you go up a bit more or not? Yeah. Try and bring the front around. The nose is pointing where it needs to be, but for the next bit, I think I'll opt for the rumba to keep it super safe. Have a winch! <laughs> I'm so excited for the winch! Oh my goodness. Well, he's just got his front up the step. Um, we're going to hook the winch up. The winch sort of isn't in the right angle, but we're just going to give it a go. We think the back might slip down the hill, but hopefully it holds him just enough from rolling over. <laughs> now there's some words to fill you with confidence. It feels like it wants to flip on the winch. You're gonna have to drive before you winch a bit more. It feels like it wants to winch the car over. Yeah, can you just, just drive forward a little bit? Because if you come forward another foot, you're gonna level up a lot more. Oh, real careful. See, it's gonna come down, and you have to winch and to winch and drive at the same time. That's good. Keep doing that. You gotta commit. You gotta commit. Yep. Beautiful, mate. Beautiful, mate. Keep coming at that. That's perfect. That's good, that's real good, that's real good, yeah. Keep coming, keep coming. Just keep doing that, now go hard, hard left, hard left. Yeah, that's perfect, mate. Perfect, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Yeah, you've done it, the back's up. That's all you. Beautiful, mate. Oh, I've got a pain in my stomach. <laughs> oh, sugar. Well, how bloody good was that? That was that pretty was impressive. Amazing. It was a big going on. <laughs> Absolute precision, a bit of winch in there. Oh my goodness. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you, mate. That was unreal. Yeah, right. I can see how sketchy it felt, right. but you just had to come forward a little bit and that wheel would climb up. What you had to do is you had to drive. If you didn't drive, yeah. you winch yourself on your yeah. leg. It's but you couldn't as drive that. too much because you'd slip. It was, it was like it was yeah. real tricky to do. Wow. did such a good job. Wow. I bet you feel good now. I feel great, but I still got to get back down here. Yeah. That's a... <laughs> you even impress the other boys, I think. But hurry up. <laughs> that was a bit loose. I won't lie to you. That was nothing short of epic. Well, this is exciting having you on board, Reuben. Oh, I'm super excited. Well, Pete's coming up next. Still got his work cut out for him. I think he'll do it all right. He's gonna take the high side and try and get, it's all about getting yourself lined up at the start and then really trusting your winch and your right foot. Pete's got a lot less panel protection than I do, so he's gonna to need to be extra precise. And again, getting the perfect start angle is the key. Oh, 
to stack some rocks, but like to get past it, you have to do a little bumpy bump. Get a bit, bit of a bump just to try and grind the back over, but yep. just basically stay straight at that. Yeah, right, eh? <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Folks, this is better than the roller coaster of dream world, I can tell you. Nah, oh. nah, no, no, stop there. No good? Yeah. You might have to try and winch you sideways now, because that's like your spare tyre is on the thing, it's going to push your back door in. See if we can winch you and get the tyres spinning. Maybe to spin the front around. Yeah, right. I'll try that. What's happened here is Pete's actually stuck between a rock and a hard place, basically. His um, spare tyres stuck on here. So we're going to try and hook the winch up and see if we can get the, pull him to the left because we don't really have any other options at the moment. It's going to be pretty loose. If this works, this will be one of the craziest recoveries I've seen at Full Drive 24-7. And if it doesn't, well, let's not even think about that. Oh my God. <laughs> Start the drive now, Pete. Yeah, real slow, real slow. Yeah, keep going. Keep going, drive it up real slow. Yeah, start driving, start driving. Steer this way, steer this way. Yeah, turn away, turn away, turn away. Have a go at that. <laughs> but once again, Pete's pulled a rabbit out of the hat and done a very committing drive. Far out, far out, what a show, what a show. Well, that's, that's one way of doing it. Just did not want to take no for an answer then, and um, he's just winched the whole front of the vehicle around. Done a little bit of panel damage, but he's got off pretty pretty light. I thought things could have got a lot worse than that. Welcome aboard the sooty taxi, mate. Thank you very much. With the switchback done, we're piling everyone into the last two rigs standing and making a run for the top. It's a cool track. It is cool, isn't it? it? Just keeps going this way. Yeah. Like I said, there's a lake at the top of this mountain, providing the clouds clear enough for us to see it. Yeah, good mate. Yeah, good. good. Too easy in the new city. You know what? At one stage I thought she was destined for a tow truck home, and here we are. Tables have turned. We're nearly at the lake, are we? Very close. One more challenge. One more no more, as they Three say. Three cars down, nearly at the top. This track's been epic, mate. Oh, too easy. Up we go. Up we go. <laughs> here we go. A few days ago, I would never have believed that I'd be back wheeling Sooty again so soon. This has been such an epic trip for so many reasons, and I couldn't ask for a better bunch of blokes to do it with. At last, we've made it to the top, and the glorious views, well, they're just ahead. What do you reckon, boys, the view? <laughs> oh, unreal <laughs> view. This really is one of the best views in Tasmania, and you guys are so lucky to come and see it with your own eyes, because as far as I'm concerned, absolutely stunning. Just a picturesque place. And have you got a photo? You, you got a postcard gonna, or something? I was going to say, well, I, I can't understand why you don't have your phones out. Get a, get a couple of photos, boys. Take it all in. Sink it in. We're just on cloud nine. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't believe me, nine. have a look at this. See what I mean, fellas? Oh, yeah, that's absolutely yeah, yeah. stunning. Oh, yeah, there you go. And, and look, even if you don't get a view like we have today, well, you got one of the best tracks in Tasmania as well. Super technical, super hard. As you saw, only two vehicles made it, and one of the most unlikely vehicles in the convoy. Oh, I'll see <laughs> Come back. Yeah, beautiful. I can't believe it. I think um, I was destined to be on a tow truck after the first challenge of this trip. But, um, you know, I want to say a big thanks to you boys as well. Because without you fellas, you know, giving me the encouragement to, uh, come on, get Sooty back on the tracks, it would have been on a tow truck, and I would have been in the D-Max with you, mate, for the whole trip. But I'm absolutely stoked. Tasmania at its absolute best. I reckon if we get off this hill quickly, we might even catch a beard down in Zion. Oh, See us around. Enjoyed the journey so far, just wait till you see what's coming up next time. Radio action, boys. Oh, oh, oh. It's all going on. Our Tassie journey is far from over. Oh, get a load of this. 
with another two iconic West Coast tracks on the car. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, this feels sketchy. In one moment that I'll never, ever forget. I have to see what happens. No, stop, stop, stop. Holy shit. I think I'm going to need a minute. Catch it very soon on Full Drive 24-7.